Well, welcome back to Poe here on Sunday morning, and the sun is shining in the Pyrenees for this ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup 2, and it's the chance for the canoeists to get out on the water after the K1 action on Saturday. It's that no vive Poe Pyrenees. It certainly proved to be a hugely challenging course in the kayaks. See if it's the same here. Much brighter conditions. As we look forward in particular to the women's C1 and men's C1. Top rank in the women's field, Nuria Villa Rubla and Ana Satil of Brazil go head to head. But joining me for this WC1 women's event is Batran Gutierrez. Hi everyone. So yes, today we have a really challenging course. It's 25 gates, six abstract gates. It's going to be very challenging for the kayakers. You can see the list here and there. We may expect, if we go by the rankings, it's a battle between Brazil and Spain for medals. But as we saw in the K1 events, Nothing can be taken for granted. And certainly expecting the semi-final to have some twists and turns as Daria Kuznetsova gets us underway. 21-year-old Russian, 2020 under-23 European gold medalist that in the Team K1. Still looking for a first major final. And we finish 16th in Tassin. This women's C1 final underway. She's done, she just switch her paddle before game number three. She switch again before number four. Because it's C1, you have one. Your paddle and your beam on your boat. There's a number of uh, paddlers who uh, are switching the kayak for the canoe. Is that a difficult thing for a paddler to do? Yes, it's, it's different actually. Sometimes it's really good for you because you can take some different things from the other uh, category. But yes, for sure, it's tiring when you when you do both. Excellent. With uh, two penalties accumulated, gate seven and eleven. So for some people, they are staying on the same side and they cross the pair paddle. Sometimes some people switch, like she did just right now. Kuznetsova finished 14th in the K1. Maybe a struggle for her to reach a first major World Cup final. Big opportunity for a lot of the paddlers with COVID restrictions, meaning a lot of big nations and big stars haven't made it here to the south of France. Also, sadly, meaning the uh, Whitewater Stadium here in Po is bereft of the passionate fans. Hopefully, you've been able to join us here for live coverage of this WC1 final. And in the end, it's a struggle for Daria Kuznetsova. And she is ranked one, but that is not something that's going to last very long at all. It's already underway, just 15 years of age, Clara Kinablova of the Czech Republic. It's incredible. We've obviously seen Evie Lempfarth, just 16 years of age. This uh, very much massive opportunity to pick up some great experience. 
did reach the final of the Junior Euro Championships at Krakow 2020 and won a gold medal in the C1 team event with her sister Teresa, who will be on the water later this morning. And at this moment she has plus four seconds of penalties, so it's meaning she touched two gates, because when you touch you have plus two seconds penalty. If you touch the gate with your boat, your paddle, or your body, it's plus two seconds. If the water touch the, the, the gate, it's not penalty. So how uh, far were you along in your paddling career at the age of 15? Were you... Uh, 15. 15? As a teenager at 15 years old, were you competing oh, in World Cup? Yeah. No, I didn't think about any races actually. So it's quite impressive to see that. Well, as uh, two years older, at the ripe age of 17, Naomi font Verobe. Looks like... Uh, Teenager races today. Teenage party in Po and uh, the Andorran. So 148 in the world at C1 already, but a first World Cup appearance, having made the short trip from Andorra, 100 kilometers east to Po. And she did great on this move, three and four. Try to push him hard and she just roll on this gate number eight. But at this moment she don't have penalty. She certainly had her shown she has a bright future. Did attend the 2019 World Championships at La Seu d'Urgel. First senior events but failed to make the semi-finals. It's certainly going to be a tough ask to try and get out of this semi-final. There were heats, but uh, non-qualification. So huge opportunities for a lot of the paddlers who have never had the opportunity to compete at a World Cup semi-final stage. There are some winners during the COVID crisis. Just beat this gate and she tried to catch up. So when you beat the gate, it's 50 seconds penalty. Only one, one part of your, your head must be in the gate. And you can for sure paddle back. Try to catch up. It'll be interesting as we move up the field to see how the time will suddenly drop quite uh, dramatically as the top paddlers in the field take to the water. So she pass gate number 19 before 18. So it's all that sharp 15 and 18, it's not possible to cut the gate when you pass the next. So you have to really make sure your mass is solid. <laughs> yes. Important to remember your numerical consecutive numbers. And it's a heavy penalty. Mathematical error. Yeah, Naomi Port, Ver Ove. Certainly one. I'll have a chance to look back at this. Probably work with her coaches to see where she can improve. Next up, Mariana Torres Bricero of Venezuela. 22 years of age. Named Nani. Been the Venezuelan national champion every year since 2015. Her favorite film is Forrest Gump, so let's see if she can run. Sadly, quite as fast as Tom Hanks' character. 
the Venezuelites uh, small nation kayaking world so she's trying hard and doing something but it's hard in her country I imagine not many of them are using Angel Falls to yes. get some kayak experience, maybe a little bit too high of a fall. Yes, and there isn't uh, white water also. So she's training in America. Teresa Pulova saw her younger sister take to this course earlier this morning. It's her chance to see if she can get the family bragging rights. She's just touch the gate number 10. She was pushing a little bit too much. She was a little bit too early. And she just passed the Venezuelan. Oh, that's... Uh... Impressive with her 7.48 seconds in her pocket, the reigning junior C1 European champion, collecting that gold in Krakow earlier this year. Improved on the silver medal she managed the year prior in Poland. She's also made an impact at senior level, a sixth place finish in the European final, Prague 2020. So certainly would have come out expecting to set decent time and wait to see if maybe luck would be on her side for a potential place in a final. Yeah, she had plus four of penalty, but I think it's not bad. For the moment, it is the top ranking. 25.53 seconds faster than Kuznetsova. Certainly we'll have to Wait and see how the top of the field attack the course as Michaela Corcoran takes to the water. The twin sister Madison performed in the K1 women's event. Corcoran sisters performing in Tassin. Just the second World Cup event of the COVID hit calendar. It's been great to have the paddlers back on the water in competitive kayak canoeing. Certainly hope for a more normal schedule next year, but very much up in the air. Even still concerns over Tokyo 2021. It could be a great year for the sport, where for the first time the Olympics and the World Championships will hopefully be in the same year. Yeah. It's a weird year. Weird time, certainly, but someone may have the chance to try and do Olympic and World double, but uh, obviously that would be a huge ask. Second section wasn't that fast, so I think it's going to be hard for her to catch Teresa. Just inside the top 100 in the world, Michaela Corcoran shows a bit of frustration, currently sitting second. So likely she'll be holding on for a final play, says Laura Alicia Chica takes to the water, the Andorian showing her muscle. Uh, looking to show her skills in both. Yeah, she, we did, she didn't catch it up the way. We forget number four, so she was a little bit low. She was time up there. But she doesn't have a penalty at this moment. She's just, oh, it's a little bit tight. Certainly the Andorin, 82 in the world in C1. And, uh, very frustrating K1 semi-final. She did brilliantly and yet just missed out on the final by only two and a half seconds. So 
certainly still been a positive weekend in Po, but can she finish it with the final? She's only been to one World Cup final before, where she finished ninth, 11th in the World Cup event. And uh, her best result was actually in Po at just 17 years of age. So she does know the waters here. She was. 1.6 seconds late and she also lost a bit time on this up on the left but this spin was pretty good let's see the last section the last difficulty you can see the time of in a blue bar Teresa not going to be close to that well, in her 11th World Cup event. She is not going to be able to push to beat that ninth place finish. You see, ranked third. It'll be frustrating for Chica. Anastasia Kozareve. Kozareva takes to the water at the 22 year olds They're very happy yeah really good up on the left up number eight she has only one touch gate number one but she's in advance well, this is our third c1 world cup event after failing though Escape the heats in 2018 and 2019 into a semi final. She did compete in Tassin, finishing 13th in the end. An excellent result for the 22 year old. The World 77 would hope to try and improve on that and reach a first final. Certainly a tough ask in what may be. Restricted field, but still a top class one. She lost a lot of time on this middle section. She just needs the gate and she pedal back. She did pedal back. Let's see the last section. It's a really difficult section on this gate 22 23. Right. It's going to be not enough. So the Russian, Zareva, paddling hard at the end. Just third ranked. Certainly, you can see the physical, mental drain that Po takes out of you. Water certainly vibrant this morning. Rain yesterday, the sun is shining. Sanjel Pug makes her way out. 20 year old from France. She's really improving since two years. And what she's doing is great at this moment. She's in fast. That is the first difficulty, and it's pretty good. Really fast on 11 and 12. Well, semi finalists in 2019 junior and under 23 European Championships. That was at K1. It's a debut at a World Cup event. And certainly making a very positive impression on home water. Ah, she just don't catch enough. The wave on 16 and she was a little bit pushing down. It's for that she was a little bit low on 17, but it's a small mistake. She don't have a penalty at this moment. So I think it's gonna be good for her. Let's see the last difficult on the course. Yes, that's pretty good. I think she will take the first place. Ah, she just touched the last gate. Frustration there as that added two seconds may not stop her going into the top ranking now. But how 
may it affect her when it comes to the final 10 spots available for the final. So Victoria Tobrodvorska of Ukraine has medalled at a World Cup event in 2015. The year she last reached the World Cup final, that was in the World Cup 4 in Seu. She finished sixth, as mentioned, reaching two bronze medals in what has been her best year in 2015, World Cup 2 and 3. And she was a ninth place finisher in Tassin C1 final. So can the Ukrainian World 44 paddle her way to another final? It's going to be hard to catch the time of Angel. What she did was a pretty good run. And this girl um, at this moment with four seconds of penalty. So 8.77 behind the time of Angel Burke. Did compete at the 2020 Euros in Prague, but failed to escape the C1 heats. And it doesn't look like she's going to be escaping from this semi-final. Sun is shining here today. Weather is clear. Gonna move those dancing feet, but <laughs> yeah, the last difficulty was pretty good. It's going to be not enough to catch the time of Angel for sure, but maybe third place. See the time of 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, not good enough. Wait to see how quick the top of the field go is Miran Lascano takes the water, the 23-year-old from San Sebastian. He says, oh, Lee Valley in the UK are her favourite courses. World 36 will hope to prove that here. She did compete in the C1 European final. She posted a seventh place finish. She has had golden moments in Po. Yeah, the Spanish team know very well this course. They are training a lot here. It's near to the place. She don't have penalty. She is not really fast, but she don't have penalties. And she's starting the second part right now. It's looking good. Initially, but down on the time of Oog. She did make the semi-finals in the Extreme K1 event yesterday. It's going to be extremely difficult to find any place in the final later today. She just hit the rock. She didn't jump enough before the gate. This is the last difficult from here. Yes, but that. You can certainly see how tight the corners are. You can make any mistakes if you're wanting to progress, says Miren Lascano. Well, sure, disappointment. Challenging race here. And now we're starting to see the top paddlers take to the water. Victoria Us, 11th in the C1 in Tassin last month, just missing out on the final. She was 12th in the Rio Games K1. The Poe 2019 European Championship, she failed to make the K or C1 finals. Just one World Cup medal in her pocket. That was in K1, but hoping for better showing here. But another one of a lot of paddlers we even saw yesterday getting a penalty on the very first gate. Shows that it's a challenge right from the off. 
was fast on the first part, but she did touch two gates and three right now. She has plus, plus four at this moment. Well, she was the only female to go clean and clear in the women's K1 final, which brought her a bronze medal. It doesn't look like it's going to be double medal joy for 27-year-old Ukrainian. Another of the paddlers who said Tony Istange is her idol, the Pone native, who won three Olympic golds in C1 helped to build this course with his brother. And also when you're doing both K1 and C1, you have the advantage to know the course because you did practice a little bit before, the day before, so you know the, the line. Fortunately, not of great help to Victoria Us. She'll be disappointed with that, but still leaving the weekend with a bronze as Eva Vinova, 20-year-old Czech. Next to attack the course. Mia Kova, two-time bronze medalist at both world and European champions. That in the C1 team events. Seventh World Cup event, but without a final appearance. She's making her claim today just down on the time of Oog. Still remains just out in front. That's really tight at gate 11. She's a switch in the gate, but at this moment she don't have a penalty. She has a penalty review. Let's see what the judge, what the judges decide. We'll see because it could have a big bearing on her placing of the finishing line. She's already down on the time of Oog, losing. Down to 3.43 seconds, struggling hard against the current. Yeah, this up on the left is really hard. The stepper before this up is strong and stop you. So you have to push very strongly. Well, as we've seen, world ranking gives you an idea of the experience and quality, but already easily inside the top 50 paddlers in the world, it's still showing the major challenge here in Poe. So we'll have to wait on the penalty review until we get that. Yeah, over absolutely fuming. Now we'll get a look back at the penalty that's under review. Yeah, she just passed her head, but we can't really see from here. Let's see what the judges will decide. So there are judges on the bank. And some watching video, no penalty. We have the confirmation. No penalty leaves her in second, and the first paddler to go clean through the course. And even better news for our current leader, Angel Hug. Her angelic run has made it into the final. Her qualification has been confirmed. Veova will have to wait and see if she could join her. Certainly a clean run gives her a chance, but we see penalties and speed. The balance between is Marjorie Delassou takes to the water. Certainly, Delassou's siblings used home course knowledge to post the fastest time in the unofficial heats this weekend. And as we've seen for the Delassou family, it's about converting when the medals are on offer. Anatole, brother, having a disappointing men's K1. Natasha failing to medal in the extreme K1. Yeah, she will represent France at the next Olympic game. And she lost a big time, a lot of time on the second part, but the goal is just catch final. 
Well, it's uh, fourth place ranking for 2019 under 23 C1 European champion. She's got a ticket to Tokyo. She's going to have to wait on whether she has won to the final as Asu Minasova heads out. Failed to reach the C1 or K1 finals at Tassin World Cup meet. She also had a hugely disappointing extreme K1 yesterday, having taken gold in that event in Tassin. She failed to make the final, and it looks like it's going to be a frustrating weekend in Bo. Can she keep it focused? It's a long way to go with two penalties already incurred. She did take C1 silver at the Under-23 World Championships in Krakow 2019. She's going to struggle three times on the podium in Extreme K1, but hasn't found that success K or C1 event. Six seconds late, but the up on the left, up number 17 was pretty good, and the last part is good at this moment. Let's see the last difficulty, and she just hit the rock. Yes, it's not bad. It is enough for the final. Three qualified, Ug, Vyashova, and Minnesota already qualified. It's Evie Lepfar takes to the water, 16 years of age. We've already seen the teenagers at the top of the field, but this teenager is uh, no ordinary youngster. Yeah, really youngster. And she stayed. Stuck a little bit on this first wave, this first stopper. She lost a bit of time. She turned just before the gate, and again on this gate, number eight. So she lost a lot of time on this first part. Let's see. It's very interesting as she had a fantastic weekend in Tassin last month. Bronze in both K and C1 events. Talked about how often she'd been in Tassin, but this is her first time in the Pyrenees. Certainly, Pan American K1 champion has struggled on the pool course. Certainly shows how much comfortability on the water in a particular place is important. Yeah, plus 10 seconds behind, and she stays stuck a little bit. Trying to make up time. She certainly had a frustrating K1 event, finishing 10th out of 10 in the final. Still trying to give herself a chance of a medal. She's up against it after a tough first half of the course. Enough for the final, we'll wait and see. She's got to hit it hard. Still yet to clock it, and it's ninth round, so that is a really tough place to be. And it looks like it's going to be a hugely disappointing full weekend for the hugely impressive World 15. Just shows how tough it is here as Lucy Bodu takes her full challenge. Failed to reach the K1 women's final after a missed gate. She hasn't actually reached a World Cup final C1 since Lee Valley in the UK in June 2019. Hopefully for her, home advantage will count. Two penalties already, Batman. Yes, two penalties already. It's the last French of this course. She knows very well this course. It's her playground. She's training here. All year. 
but nothing is finished. It's only the semi-final, the goal is cut the final. And what she is doing on this part is pretty good. Well, she was fifth in the C1 European final in Prague earlier this year. A bit low on this up, she lose time here also. 27 year old, so they would be frustrated, beaten out to the Olympic ticket by Marjorie Delassou. Hoping to try at least make sure she can take a place in this Po final. Delassou very much on the edge of missing out. She has two more touches on 21 and 23. It's going to be hard for her to cut the final. And it's really showing how extremely difficult it is out here. And as we mentioned earlier, just because the top paddlers are coming, cannot take it for granted. Uh, Naomi Fox, the world 13 from Australia. Bronze under 23, C1 world medal at Iberia in Italy in 2018. She won a C1 team gold alongside her older sister and double Olympic medalist Jessica, world champion. She's certainly from high pedigree, coached by her mum, former French paddler Miriam Fox. She have a salon me. Her dad, Richard, was an Olympian and 10 time gold medalist in world championships in K1. Certainly a lot expected of the box in the box. Yeah, she's a really good paddler. But she did some mistake in this first section. And just one more mistake on gate 14. Let me one mistake seconds. too many for the Australian. 23 years of age, already looking hugely challenging. Attempt for a final place. There's only five places remaining. Ug, Piyashova, Minnesota, Lascano, Victoria, Ush into that final. It's a worry for the other French women as they are on the edge. Looks like it's going to be tough for Fox, and a missed gate just ends her hopes. Just missed two gates, and 22-23. The last part is really difficult, actually. Huh? It's a really, it's really tough part. Based in the south of France with the Australian frustrating ride. Currently 16th is Clara. Rapal takes to the water. Switch her paddle before I put the up four. This moment. See Luke's time at 31.16 at this stage. Already 1.27 seconds down. Only one second late at this moment. First time, Angel. This middle section is pretty fast. Yes. She's fast on this middle section. She catches it up the way. Let's see this difficult map on the left. Yeah. That's a really good map on the left. Fast exit. So far, she's producing a clean run. Surely would see her into the final. 22-year-old from Spain. And this is not finished because there is the last big difficulty. And it's pretty good. She finished fifth in the 2019 World Championships in C1. Certainly has pedigree. She did senior an amazing, events. amazing run. And it is by far the quickest, not just clean, but 3.14 seconds quicker. 
Angel Urg. And it's no surprise that that means she has blasted her way into the final. Stunning performance. She is into the final, no problems. Monica Doria, the Rubla of Andorra, takes up the challenge. World number 10, just 20 years of age. Certainly a stronger performer in C1. Third in her semi-final to reach final. European Championships in Pau last year, 10th in that final, but already she's up against it after two early penalties. Yeah, she's, tra she's uh, training with Clara in, in uh, Spain. So these two girls are angry together since three years. Places left in the final. Just three paddlers remaining. You would expect to make it. The course has proven difficult mistress to tame. qualified for the final safely and it means that in particular Marjorie Delosu is on the edge of missing out she'll have to hope for mistakes but that would be coming from the top two ranked Nuria Villa Rubla of Spain the world number nine 2016 European C1 champion will expect to be in the final but we've seen She's made such a strong start. It's a long, long way to go. Yeah, really strong start. Start with one second, more than one second in advance. She's meddled heavily for the 28-year-old on the international stage. A World C1 bronze in London 2015. Nine World Cup medals. Four goals, one of them came here in the Pivotes 2015 in Po, and she is absolutely dominating at the moment. Yes, what she's doing is really fast. She stayed just stuck a little bit on the surfing of the wave. But it's really a small mistake. Last section. Well, hugely impressive, and particularly, as you imagine, yeah. the paddlers will be wanting to qualify for the final with some powder still dry. So if she's going fast now, what could she produce in the final? But we'll see in the end. She's just lost time on the last section. She won't be too bothered about that with safely into the final. And just the third paddler to go clean on the route. But here comes the world number three, Anna Satila. World C1 bronze at Po 2017. She missed out on K1 gold in Tassin by Miss Gate, but she put that behind her to win gold in the C1 event, her first ever at the World Cup. Looking for double C1 delight. Advanced 1.9 seconds. That's a pretty good start. She's come with the focus of a champion. Brazilian will want to convert that early advantage. She switched her palette just before 11. And she did the speed pretty well. She missed out on double medal in Tassin. 
and she had another frustrating K1 oh. this weekend. Finishing fourth just off the podium. Penalties punished her there. We can see her time has really been eaten into. It's a small margin. Of course, the main thing is qualifying for the final. She looks on course to comfortably do that. She lost, she lost time on this second section. Certainly French attention will be on this ride because Satilla confirms what looks like being just a final qualification. But it's Marjorie Delassou who's currently in 10th. But a few mistakes from the Brazilian has just put a little bit of pressure on. She's still got time in hand. Well, she started brilliantly, ends up down in seventh, but it's enough for the final and enough to push Marjorie Delassou, who will be going to Tokyo 2021 for France in C1. She has failed to make the final, and in fact, only one French woman made it, Angèle Hugues third fastest time but it is the top two in the world competing here Nuria Villa Rubla second quickest time and Anna Satila down in seven it's Clara Olazabal is the quickest in the field Spain one two in the semi-final and obviously it's later today that really matters. They've set the tone. As we see the frustration for the host nation, Marjorie Delassou, Lucy Baudou, just missing out. Maybe Lepfar as well. will be very disappointed to finish 16th. As the top 10 advance to the women's C1 final. Spain certainly making their claim for medals. We'll wait to see how it plays out as we await the men's C1 semi-final. Fascinating women's semi-final. Not a great day for France so far. And Uga in the final. Let's see how the men will get on ahead of the C1 men's fire semi-final. C1 canoe final. 
prepared to get underway. You see the starting list. Certainly plenty of home interest with the top two ranked Martin Toma, Denis Gargo, Sean battling it out as they did for a ticket to Tokyo. Certainly some controversy over K1, but did finish ahead of Boris Nevu and Pedro Gonçalves. It's going to be a tough ask to try and reach a first World Cup. Teenager setting the tone for the men's semi-final. It's, it's a good start for him. That is pretty good. And for, for the men, the men don't really switch the pattern at this moment. They are starting to try it. So, for example, the Olympic champion, Denis Gargo Chanu, trying to switch his paddle, and today he will paddle on the right. Normally, he paddles on the left. And what? today he decided to paddle on the right. Pretty good run. Jose Silva of Venezuela. 42 years of age. Gone from 16 to 42. So there's a slight difference in experience between the two paddlers. Yes. Already down on. Young Baldoni's time, Jose Silva did make the C1 heats of the World Championships at Le Ceo in 2019, but failed to escape those heats. His last World Cup appearance was at the same venue, the World Cup final in 2018. Certainly having a tough time out on the white water. Yeah, like I said, it's very hard for the Venezuelan to train down at the white weather there to try to come in Europe. Finishing seventh. That was his first World Cup final. Can he qualify for another? Yeah, that was pretty good. He catched up the wave. He kept his speed. Russian hard. 
as he paddles with real aggression. And he is ranked first, eating into the time a lot. He looks happy with that. Long way to go, but we'll see if it's enough later in the ride. Daniel Perez of Spain, 18 years of age, beaten in the 2020 Euros in Prague, but failed to make it out of the C1 heats. Who did compete in the final of the C1 team event, and Spain came in seventh. Yeah, just catching up the wave, and the current pushed him down, so he was a bit low on this first up, number four. And also, he have one touch number three and one more touch number eight. So, it's not the best first part. Can dream. Must always keep our dreams. Be tough but to have them realized. But this pin number 11 and down number 12 was pretty good. Actually, but just touch number seven, number seventeen. I think it's not going to be enough to enter in the final. We should have get the time. He lost before. Eight seconds. Eight. Russian. Lev Lev at the moment with the quickest time is Terence Saramandi. His attempts, 18 year old from Mauritius, competed in the extreme K1 yesterday, now taking on C1. Hi, number four, just touched number four, and up on the left, second up on the left, number eight was pretty good. He will be behind. Four point six seconds behind. Good up on the left. He kept his speed. And this thing is pretty hard to do on this gate 17. Well, he did compete in the Youth Olympics and uh, champion. 2018 in Buenos Aires at the C1 obstacle slalom. This is fourth World Cup event, but yet previously to escape the heats. So already first semi-final. He's given himself an outside chance of qualifying, but a long way to go. It's second. Second at the moment. Lev Lev still with the quickest time. Perez of Spain, third, Baldoni, fourth, and Silva, fifth. With 17 still to come. We yet to see what times will be good enough for the final as Joris Oten of the Netherlands paddles out. Tenth World Cup event, but never reached a final. Failed to escape the heats from the C1 senior Euros. Prague back in September. Yeah, it's going to be complicated for him to cut the final with already plus six seconds of penalty. Gate number two, gate number four and eight. But he 
again, probably catch up a little bit of time on this second section with a beautiful speed 11 and down 12. Second section was really good, really beautiful. Let's see this half up. And it, oh, it just, I think he switched his pad a little bit late and he, did, he didn't push enough. John Tower on this 80. Exactly, paddling with much enthusiasm to the line. It's not going to make a difference. Just tosses his paddle away. Saw that from Jan Fredriksen in the K1 Extreme, although that was with a lot more cheer as Games of the representing Senegal, taking his opportunity. Trains lives in event. Choosing to represent Senegal. 22 year old world 69 and already eating into the time. Really good start from him and really fast on gate number eight. Let's see if we will if we will keep doing like this. A bit late on 11, but it's okay for 12. Pretty fast at this moment, I think. It be a lot of time. Uh, not a lot, actually. Zero point three seconds. Seen on the right. Is it based in France and certainly very good. Young Bretons. Brothers representing Senegal. He is his first out. His brother Jean Pierre will be out of the water too later. Training partners, unsurprisingly. It looks like he's trained pretty well ahead of this. And it is the quickest time. He's Bergis. Well, he looks like a man who thinks he can go quicker. But it's quick enough at the moment to lead the way and the first clean run of the men's semi-final. Now, Felipe Borges of Brazil attacks the course. He's a double bronze medalist at the Pan-American Games in C1, both at Toronto 2015 and in Lima last year, and also 16th at his home Olympics in Rio in 2016. Already an early penalty. Meaning he's down on the fastest time of Boris. Yeah, it's not that fast on this first part that we can see with a beautiful drug shot. Fast on 10. Difficult spin, but it's all right. Four seconds with his touch. Let's meet two second row. We saw the standings there in your top left of your screen. Benavides represented Senegal. One clean run. And the first Klevlev of Russia. Sabah Mandi, Perez, Maldoni, Otan, and Silva. We get up the current top seven. can see with the drone footage, the judges on the bank. It's 
currently third for Felipe Borges. That's likely not going to be a final making time. So Luis Fernandez of Spain. Cool cucumber beforehand. Will he be keeping his cool on the fiery waters of Po? And the first part is pretty, pretty fast. Good up number 10. Spain already having an excellent C1 day in Po. The women's semi final. Ola Zabal and Villa of Rubla, the two quickest. Can Spain find more success? The setup, chance for success in the final. It was a bit late on this first split, but the up on the left, 17 was pretty fast. And this up is fast too, but you have a touch gate 20. Okay, probably catch first time. Yes. Well, a terrific run despite the two point penalty at 20. It's the quickest time for the Spaniards. 23-year-old, superb run. Finds himself himself in a strong position. Jean Pierre Veris takes his attempt after seeing his brother set the previously fastest time before Fernandez. Started paddling at eight years old in Brittany. And set his proudest moment with being the first paddler in C1 to represent Senegal. Yeah, it's a big competition between these two brothers. And at this moment, they're open five seconds in advance. It's good, he's in the middle of the gate. He looks comfortable on his boat. He did a really good gates 11 and 12. Yes, he looks very, very stable on his boat. Just didn't catch it on this wave and it's going to be hard for this up. On the left, he's a bit low. Good speed on the right. 18. He's heading to the last difficulty on the course. Decide to speed gate 21. Like his brother. He did a really good end. Let's see if it's going to be enough. Well, lost a lot of time in the last section. You can see the frustration, ranked fifth. But he's going to struggle to make the final. His brother, younger brother, certainly in a better position at the moment. As Sebastian Rossi shakes out his hair. Certainly plenty of attention. Himself out of the canoe. Can he keep the focus in it? Pretty fast at this moment. Pretty dynamic, dynamic style. We can see the different style between these paddlers. Some are more relaxing, trying to play with all the current, and some are more dynamic. Sebastian Rossi. 
Argentinian, 53rd in the world, certainly enjoying the pole course for the moment. Okay, it's a really good part on here. Just a little bit behind, but he did a really good up on 17. That's a really good fix because it's really hard to be fast on 17. Certainly been a Rossi family event here in Po. Carolina Rossi competing in the women's extreme canoe and her brother Lucas in the men's K1. He was really tight on gate 22, but looks okay. I think he's going to catch the first time. Oh, he's absolutely yes. smashed it. 3.05 seconds. Lean as well. His younger siblings building experience in Po. Sebastian Rossi. Chisel competitor. Zachary Locken of the United States takes it on the world 50. So into the top 100 in the world. It's a really good time from the Argentinian. It's going to be hard for the others to catch him. One second behind at this moment, at this stage. And obviously, as we move through the field and get into the second half, We'll start to get an idea what times will actually be enough to qualify for the final. Ten places up for grabs. Yeah, the second part is pretty important as well. And what he's doing is pretty great at this moment. Well, it's certainly enough yeah. to beat the time thus far. As we see the split, Sebastian Rossi, thus far the quickest. Locking. Just a little wobble, managed to keep himself afloat. If you compare with Rossi, he lost a bit of time on this up. 17, but he was a little bit in advance. At a split time, and he just hit the rock. I think it's not going to be enough to beat the Argentinian, but maybe for the second place. Working hard still. Now to go for the line it won't be quick enough to beat Rossi's time certainly Zachary Locken slipping to third plus 3.62 certainly looking like a man you look back with frustration at the second half after what you said Bertrand was a very strong start yes it was pretty strong pretty fast and here he is Jules, Jules Bernardet Having a little sniff, seems happy enough. Uh, the Frenchman attacks the home course. Yeah, Jules Bernardet is a really talented guy, really technical, with a special style. He has his style, and at this moment he has plus two seconds of penalty, and only one second behind, and he did a really good up on the left, number eight, and also a really fast up Number 10. Beautiful spin. Beautiful very tight. Spin. Number 12. Really gliding through the water. Yeah, we can see him really comfortable on his boat. You know very well this place in mind. Two seconds. Well, considering two seconds up with a two second penalty. It shows that certainly the pace he's going at is by far the quickest. Oh! Just close a bit of that here, the current push him down. The so white knuckle ride and a white water course. You can see how quickly time can drift away from you. Oh, it just rolled. But it's okay, don't have a 50, it's only plus two. Did he think he was suddenly an extreme K1? <laughs> Well, he, but I think it's going to be maybe enough to catch, probably. Yeah, it's going to be hard. Well, he 
shakes out the water. He had the sniff test in his introduction, but uh, it's not smelling quite as rosy as it was looking. He did manage to keep going, but obviously the spin put it completely out of whack, and an extra two seconds could be really costly as Liam Hedjo of Ireland takes to the water. World 38, all smiles beforehand. Will he be smiling come the finish? And the first qualify is Argentinian Rossi. Sebastiano Rossi into the final later this afternoon. Evesbury will be hoping to join him. Others will wait on nervously as we to the top ten of the men's competitors in the C1 semi-final. Well, I'm sure we'll have to beat up time at this. K11 and Travis will be. Ah, and no, he's in advance. Interesting because he lost a bit of time in the middle section, so he produced a really good padding at this moment. Certainly tough for the Irish team, not really any whitewater rafting in Ireland. As we're seeing, one who's really hitting the top of the sport at C1. I don't know if you. So that, but he switched his paddle just before gate 21, and he finished paddle on the left side. Well, Liam Jegu, second quickest, just one second slower. The time of Sebastian Rossi, who is qualified for the final, and it is enough for the Irish to make the final. A huge result for the Emerald Isle. It's Mateja. Marin Hitch of Croatia, World 35. Just getting stuck a little bit, digging his way out. He's heading to gate number six, and he just touched gate number five. Two seconds behind with plus two seconds of penalty, but he did a really good fast up on the left, number eight. Really tight. Let me see for the standings. Rossi's, Jegu, Bowie and Locken. Only the top two so far have qualified for the final. We're two seconds late and he has plus four of penalties, so it's meaning his raw time is pretty good, but his plus four penalty is behind. Good speed on 18. Terrific view here from the drone. Just how challenging, Let's see particularly 2021. Take your way upstream before coming back down. The sails touches. Had his time. Yeah, it's not going to be enough. It's five seconds behind. Six. Ranked eight, but it is good news for Yves Bergy, representing Senegal, who is qualified for the final. Is Vujtek Ega, 20 year old, 10th 2019 World Cup event. Hoping to reach another final. A really fast section on these two gates. He was really on the top of the water, on the top of the wave. He's really good and he can switch his paddle and he just switched on the left before the gate. Number eight. Bit late on the first pit time. Well, the reigning men's under 23 C1 European champion. And 
he managed a fifth place finish in Tassin last month. Certainly rising pedigree for the young Czech. What he's doing is great. 1.9 seconds. A bit low on 17. Right now, just lose a bit of time on 17. So maybe he lost his one second. On seven. Impressively. Mentioned the under 23 European champion also finished fifth in the senior event in Prague. And at the moment, running cleanly here in Po. And it's just a bit shy of the quickest time, but you can see that's not of importance to him. A place in the final is and qualifies comfortably. Yes. A very, very impressive ride. It was a good run from him. Well, we've seen that so far, clean runs have been rewarded in the most part. Rossi, Ega, Bergis, Lockin will hope so too, although... Really impressive up on the right. The first up before was so fast. The Czechs impressing early on. Chalutka, 0.41 quicker than Rossi at this stage. Just lost a bit time on the second up. A bit late on this spin. He surfed a little bit too much the wave and he turned a little bit too late. The spin is that he was a little bit late. 12, but he's still dominating, dominating the run with half seconds, beautiful speed of 18. Not difficult part, just hit a bit the rock, and you don't lose time. Yeah. A strong run from the Czech. Ah. Just a stumble, but it looks like it's going to be just shy, but ranked third. So they look to take it a bit out of Chalupka, but safely into the final. Already two Czech paddlers into the final as Thomas Kosherin of Switzerland gets underway. Silver medalist, the World Cup won in 2016. Looking for some more World Cup glory four years later in Po. is a really strong paddler. He very well his course. And you can see that with 1.2 seconds. Above. Really good up 10, but he's tight. Yeah, that's a beautiful part. He's predicting really good paddling at this moment. Oh, that's a really amazing time at this second speed time four seconds in advance we've already had a swiss gold winner in the men's k1 dugu taking the gold there and he gives switzerland the chance of another medal in the c1 so far looking good although it's bubbling through keeping control through 24. Now looking it's for a, a fast beautiful finish. beautiful run. And the top right by an absolute mile, four seconds, just shy of that. And a stunning ride 
from the Swiss. Koshina comfortably into the final. The world number 24, hugely impressive. It was a huge run from Thomas Koshla. Mikael Trave of Spain. We'll look to see if he can better that, although the real focus, of course, on reaching the final, but a world silver medal in the C1 team event in La Seu, but has been a junior world champion back in 2018 in C1. 20-year-old looking to make a big splash now, the senior level. He's a really talented paddler. He was European champion. K1 in C1. And he was juniors. Well, impressively, winning those two golds. He was the first male paddler in history to win both the K1 and C1 events at the same international level event. So, don't need to know much more to see that he'll be surely one of those battling for medals here. A big mistake on the middle section, and you have you had only 1.6 seconds behind Thomas Koshla, and a second mistake on gate 11 with a two-second left penalty. But he will try to catch the final, and I think it's going to be enough for him to catch the final. Oh, plus 2.6 seconds behind, second place with two big mistakes. So if he cuts them out, a medal could be in his future. Certainly still quick enough to be second behind Koshelin of Switzerland. The only sub-100 second ride. And now Lucas Rohan, world number 21 from the Czech Republic. European silver medalist in Prague earlier this year and looking to safely guide himself to the final here. Lukas, he looks that he's really comfortable on this first part and the time is meaning 2.3 seconds behind. Rohan did manage to make the C1 final in Tassin last month, taking 10th, though, in that final. They did, as mentioned, finish second in the European Championships. Smoke touches, 8-12, but he looks a little bit late, plus 6.6. .6. Taken behind the first time of Thomas Kuschler. Well, he hasn't reached a World Cup final since 2018 in Augsburg in Germany. He finished 10th in that final. Certainly, five-year-old looking to get himself back in a final. I think it's going to be hard to catch this place for the final. But he's trying hard to pushing, pushing hard. Seven places already qualified, three remaining. And it is enough to make the final. That's a good thing. The last qualifier at this moment. Koshima, the quickest, Travi, Rossi, Eger, Chalupka, Jegu, the Buris brothers. And Lukas Rohan to the final. Yves Burby making it through. His brother sadly down in 15. Too worried. As Matan Toma takes to the water, the Olympic ticket for Tokyo is his. He's had international success at Po, the C1 European Championships a year ago, taking the silver. Can he produce here again? He 
And this first part, he wasn't too fast, but wasn't too slow, neither. He will try to push a little bit harder on this second part. A little bit behind. 31-year-old with just one World Cup medal in his pocket. That was a C1 bronze at La in 2017. He tried to go direct on 18. It's the first option and he's just wrong. I think it's not the best option to do it direct on 18. But he tried and he will try to catch up. Well, he certainly put himself oh. under a whole lot of pressure. 50 seconds of penalty. The well. judges decide. And it's two missed, and this is an absolute nightmare for Martin Toma. Well, he may be going to Tokyo. He's not going to be in the World Cup final here in Po. An absolute devastation. The roll just took him out of his rhythm. And it is a disappointment, to say the least, as Denis Gago Shanu. Looks to snap his way towards a final, the 2016 Olympic champion. Although he won't be allowed to defend his title. Certainly tough qualifying. For just one spot in the French team at C1. Certainly Gago Shanu wasn't very happy with the qualification process. Yes, it's quite hard to take your ticket for the Olympic game here in France. So it was a little bit disappointing about selection races and today we have a new goal. It's switch his paddle to trying to paddle on the left and switch on the right sometimes. Must and be difficult when you're used to always doing one side to then change up your technique. It's, uh, yeah, it's very difficult. I think you can compare that with your writing, if, if you are like lefty writing. And when you try to write it on the right, it's really difficult. So he's trying to do that today to prepare his future for the new technical style. And he's doing not that until gate 21. He touched it just just one spot, one spot left in the final, but it's not going to go to just Gago Shanu. Unbelievable. The top two ranked in the world, number 14 and number nine from France, have both failed to make the final. Well, the double paddling action not writing his name into the final. And a huge shock. It's been a really disappointing weekend in Po for the home paddlers after what was such a successful women's final La Ponte and Prigion taking gold and silver since then the French have really struggled it's Thomas Kosha who leads the way Miguel Trave extremely impressive as well as Sebastian Rossi currently top three in the field but it'll be a reset for the final we'll see how the medals are distributed but as we matter Tommy the hundred penalties for two missed gates it shows nothing can be taken for granted here in Bo after exciting thrilling Surprising semi-finals. We await the women's and men's C1 finals later today.
excitement through the semi-finals. Certainly some major shocks and surprises. Not a good day for France overall. Thanks for joining us for the semi-finals. We'll be back at midday for the women's and men's finals to see who will be our medalists in the C1 events. Thanks to Batman and from me, see you later today.